Good morning and welcome to our next unit, which is CHC LEG 001, Work Legally and Ethically. So common legal issues relevant to the workplace. So you're going to have your harassment. So this could be sexual, racial, age, discrimination, unfair dismissal, customer disputes or client disputes, duty of care or neglect, uh, privacy and confidentiality issues, and clients' rights. So the overview of the legal system. So this is the sources of law. So we have a high court, we have a federal court, we have a family court. We also have a magistrate's court and legal aid. Okay, so types of law. We've got criminal law. These laws are designed to protect society. If you break them, police can take immediate action. We also have civil law. So these laws solve problems and disputes between two or more parties. The courts and legal personnel are involved in solving these issues. Identify the scope and nature of own legal rights and responsibilities. So here we need to discuss the age care standards, the building standards, the care and education of young people, child protection, criminal acts, disability standards, discrimination and harassment, equal employment opportunities and freedom of information. Adhere to legal requirements in work practice according to workplace policies and procedures. So you need to ensure that you meet your duty of care. So your duty of care is to ensure that there is no unforeseen harm that comes to your client whilst in your care. Duty of care in law. So this is coming under the ruling of tort law. So for example, if there was a breach, it would come under the tort law when it comes to duty of care. It requires an individual to provide a standard of reasonable care while carrying out any activity that could potentially harm others. Privacy. So we want to ensure that our client's privacy is maintained at all times. So this doesn't just come down to their information or their medical records. This comes down to their day-to-day -day activities or activities of daily living that we like to call them. This comes down to when you're going to attend personal hygiene that you ensure that the curtains are drawn and the door is shut. And if we're going to attend to personal hygiene, we want to maintain that dignity that certain areas are covered to maintain dignity whilst attending to that individual's needs. We want to provide our clients with choice. For example, if they choose to wash certain areas of their body whilst we attend to their personal care needs, that's okay. We're promoting that choice. We need to ensure that our staff is trained properly. That is the biggest thing, is that you need to have the underpinning knowledge and the understanding of what you need to do within the scope of your role. We need to make sure that we ask permission before entering a client's room. You need to think this is their home. You are a guest in it. This takes me on to confidentiality. So confidentiality is required by law in certain respects, the privacy of a client's records and the utmost importance to maintain that confidentiality. So when we're talking about clients records, we want to ensure that our clients records are kept on either a password protected computer that only authorised personnel have access to, or we're going to keep them in a secure locked cabinet, which also only authorised personnel will have access to. Recognise potential or actual breaches and report according to the organisation's procedures. So when we're recognising a breach, what are we recognising? We're recognising that, for example, someone has discussed a client's personal information outside of work. That is a breach and we need to take it to our supervisor. Leaking sensitive documentation or third party reports. This can even come down to accidentally taking home client information that's written down on a piece of paper from work. Ignoring duty of care responsibilities. So this is, can be breached when you can see the potential for harm, but you don't try to minimise it. 
not including clients in decision making processes. So this is where you come in and you just take over. And we're not providing our clients with any choice to make any decisions about anything. Could be down from what they want to wear to the day or towards their own care that they're getting from the service provider. The next thing that we could talk about is opening mail that's not addressed to you. You need to put yourself in your client's shoes and think to yourself, how would you feel if people were doing this to you? Or how would you feel if someone was doing this to one of your loved ones? Would it be acceptable? And if the answer that you come up with is no, it's not acceptable, then just don't do it. Identify, access and interpret sources of information about the ethical responsibilities that apply to the work role. Okay, so we work under a code of ethics and this is to ensure that the behaviour that we display whilst at work is that of an ethical nature. This provides transparency and consistency across the board. So the standard of care that a client is getting from yourself is the exact same standard of care that they're going to get from the next support worker that comes on their shift. It gives workers a framework to base their behaviour and decisions on. It outlines the worker's responsibility as well as the client's responsibility. Their families, their colleagues and the community all get wrapped up into one and this comes down under our code of ethics. So identify the scope and nature of an ethical responsibility. Part of your ethical responsibility is to ensure the protection of the client's rights. So this comes underneath your accreditation standards. So this is what we work under within the organisation. The industry and the organisation's code of conduct the industry and organisation service standards, the international and national charters, and the legislation of which we work under. So discrimination is based on things like age, gender, sexuality, religion, ethnic background, culture, and we need to ensure that our clients and our colleagues are not being discriminated against. So what they have brought in is an anti-discrimination act and that is what we work under as support workers. It means that we need to have an understanding of our colleagues and of our clients' cultural beliefs, but it does not mean that you can judge them. So if you don't necessarily understand or agree with a certain culture's beliefs, that's okay. You just need to ensure that you keep it to yourself. Confidentiality and duty of care. So as I touched on earlier, we need to ensure that we maintain our confidentiality. This is ensuring that we have our password protected computers and our secure locked up files and that nothing is left out so that anyone just wandering by can pick up and read. If we do leave certain files out and someone does walk past and pick up and read them, we are now in our breach of confidentialities and there will be ramifications for that breach. Recognise potential ethical issues and dilemmas and discuss with the appropriate person. So you'll often come across a conflict of interest. If you happen to come across a conflict of interest, this could be something as simple as you're looking after your auntie. She has become a client within the organisation that you work for and therefore that has in turn become a conflict of interest. So what do you do? You need to go to your supervisor and you need to have a discussion with your supervisor and let them know the relationship that you have with one of the clients that have come into the organisation. It is then up to your supervisor's discretion of whether she will put you on that service with that client or whether she chooses to take you off that service and replace you with another support worker. We need to have these things communicated through our hierarchy within the organisation to ensure that there's no knock-on effect into harassment and bullying and favouritism and things like that. Recognise own personal values and attitudes and take them into account to ensure non-judgmental practices. So as I said earlier, you will come across different cultures, you'll come across di different ages 
and opinions and you won't always agree with them and that's okay. But you need to remember that you are put there as a support worker. And the operative word there is support. You are there to support and assist your client's needs. You are not there to pass judgment or opinion. Whether you agree with what they believe in or not, that's fine. You are there to assist them to be able to have those beliefs. So you need to keep your judgment and your opinion to yourself. <sighs> okay, use effective problem solving techniques when exposed to competing value systems. So in the work environment, you may be faced with ethical dilemmas. You may be torn between the needs and desires of clients and your own personal values and beliefs. So this could come down to a client that you've been looking after for a couple of years has decided to give you a gift for your birthday. Unfortunately, as beautiful as that sentiment is, we are not allowed to accept those gifts. So it puts us between an ethical dilemma because at the same time, we don't want to upset our client. They have gone to the effort and the thought of giving us something lovely for our special day, but we have to adhere to our organization's policies and procedures, which is to not accept any gifts from clients. So what do we do? In that case, go to your supervisor, have a chat with them, and they will give you the best possible path to take down to ensure that your clients' feelings don't get hurt, but you're also still working within your organization's policies and procedures. Ethical decision-making. So what we need to do is we need to identify the dilemma to start off with. Apply the code of conduct or the code of ethics that go with that dilemma. Determine the scope of the dilemma and seek advice from our supervisors. Come up with possible solutions and consider the consequences of all those possible solutions and actions that you're about to take. Consider the rights and responsibilities of all involved parties and review and evaluate the suggested solution. And at the end of it, sit back and have a look at it and say, okay, what worked well and what didn't work well and what could we change if we came across this dilemma in the future? What could we change to make it happen smoother? Recognize unethical conduct and report to an appropriate person. So in this situation where someone is behaving with disregard for professional ethics and putting clients at risk, what do we do? You as support workers need to take it to your supervisor. If it's involving a particular client, you can also put in their progress notes what has happened. Please ensure that you only put in the facts, you are clear and concise, and that you don't get pulled in with judgment and opinion when you're putting notes in your client's file. Once you have taken this issue to your supervisor, it is then up to your supervisor to take it from there. Your job as a support worker is done. Recognize potential and actual conflicts of interest and take appropriate action. So, conflicts of interest. This is any situation where you have the ability to make a decision that could potentially benefit the client, but could also impact yourselves. It is a situation where there is a potential to take advantage of a client or be influenced by your interests and personal opinions. Any situation where you find influences impact the ability to perform your job on a professional basis is a conflict of interest. So what do you do? You go to your supervisor and you explain to them, there's a conflict of interest here. I'm finding that I'm really wanting to put myself first because I'm really excited about having to do this with my client, but I'm not quite sure if it's the best thing for my client. That's what your supervisor is there for. So go to them and talk to them. They are there to guide you down the right path. So managing conflicts of interest. So we go to our supervisor and we declare what the conflict is. Their supervisor will make an objective and fair decision on what needs to happen moving forward. The supervisor will then make an objective decision and inform you of what you need to do moving forward. Identify situations where work practices could be improved to meet legal and ethical requirements. 
So if you spot a particular legal and ethical issue that keeps on reoccurring at work, what should you do? Once again, take it to your supervisor, take it to a team meeting, take it to your handover and let them know, this is what I think needs to be improved, but also go in there with possible solutions on how you can improve it. Sharing feedback. So one of your greatest resources in progressing in your experience when you have dealt with an ethical issue is share your experience amongst your colleagues. You can share these in, in areas like team meetings or handover. You can sit there in a controlled environment when it is just your colleagues and your supervisor and you can say, this is what I came up against. This was my ethical dilemma and this is what we did to put in place. This is what worked well. This is what didn't work well and this is what I've learned from it. Share your experience so that if a colleague of yours happens to be going through something the same, they don't feel alone. They know that someone's gone through it as well. So you'll have summative assessments that you'll find coming down through your knowledge assessments. So summative assessments consist of skills assessments, knowledge assessments and performance assessments. These will all need to be completed prior to your unit completion. Once again, thank you for coming on and having a listen to what I've got to talk about today. Please feel free to go through your learner guide, go through your PowerPoint. If you're having any questions, contact your trainer directly and they'll be more than happy to help you out with anything. Thanks guys.